Evening everyone, Ian from DIY Home and Gardening, 29th of May and I'm sat in front of the tomatoes as I'm starting to do a bit of tying in and side shooting. So if I turn the camera around we can have a look together as to what I'm doing, how I'm doing it and why. So those are my tomato plants, 14 varieties, just one of each with the exception of this one where I've got two because it's a bit of an experimental one and you can see that I've now caned them all and tied them in which is what a lot of people do but there are differences between tomatoes. So, we have three different types essentially, or strains. So you have these which are called determinate types, which are bushed one. There is this, which is a semi-determinate type, steel bush, and then the rest which are indeterminate types. So what is the difference and what does the name mean? Well, basically, determinant means that the plant will only get to a specific height, a set height, if you will. They tend to be much more compact, bush varieties, and they will produce multiple side shoots which in turn readily produce flower and fruit so a bush variety more compact multiple trusses formed well not really trusses they hold them in bunches so bunch forming if you like but multiple fruits then you've got semi-determinate so basically a taller bush, still going to be producing side shoots and still with decent strength to it. And then the rest, which are indeterminates. Now indeterminate or cordons as they're also called, basically means that they don't have a determined height. They will just keep growing so long as the weather conditions more more uh, realistically the temperature is correct for them so indeterminate types are the ones that would be commercially grown or always traditionally commercially grown in a greenhouse because they can grow ridiculously tall or ridiculously long as you like the difference being also on these is that these and only indeterminate types need to have the side shoots removed and that is to encourage them to grow up and then to produce the flowers which will form proper trusses as we call them so as I say what I've gone through tied them all I cane them all I always cane all of them regardless because down well, growing outside, they're more prone to getting blown over and snapped. And then what I tend to do is remove a couple of the lower leaves. Let's show you on this one how I do it. So we'll remove a couple of the lowest leaves. And those, it's those leaves that are, can be touching the compost readily. And if you do them at a younger age, learn they snap off quite easily and the reason to remove them from touching the compost is trying to prevent uh, possible diseases and then with the side shoots bend them 45 degrees you can go side to side and that will snap them out just use your thumb and forefinger and that comes out nice and easily work your way up the plant and we do the same on these 
show you again. So that's a side shoot. And if you wanted to, you could always use that as a cutting. That root very quickly in water or compost. So remove two leaves. And that's all I tend to do. There's no need to strip any more leaves than that. And indeed, the whole notion of stripping multiple leaves is purely based upon what the commercial guys do. If you strip more leaves as an amateur or in our normal growing conditions, all you'll do is you'll actually reduce the crop that you get. You will not increase it. The reason the commercial guys remove leaves is purely uh, cost. It allows them to get more light down the plant because they're using overhead lighting. And so the um, the cost savings on only requiring overhead lighting outweighs the reduction in the yield of the crop. So let me continue and uh, finish stripping these down accordingly and have a look once they're all done. There we are. So that's all 14 varieties cleaned up, stripped as needed. Now, um, what I tend to do is following that, I can have a water in the morning and this will be the, well, the point at which they get a liquid feed as well. So just trying to reduce the stress that is on the plant after having removed some of the foliage and some of the growing stems just give them a feed will help them bounce back and to put a bit of growth on and now I'll take a step back as you can see using six foot high canes so they go right the way to the top of the fence once the indeterminate types at the top of the fence then I'll take the tops out of them and that's going to ensure that the fruits will actually ripen because um, as I say otherwise they'll keep growing upwards uncontrolled and that plant growth will come at the expense of fruit production so uh, yeah I'd always uh, always advocate especially in the UK taking the top out of the plant once you've got to that sort of height and that way you're going to end up with probably four or five trusses worth of um, tomatoes to grow and ripen and obviously to eat so that's it job done okay so that's it video done pretty straightforward to be honest uh, as you can see Mine grow happily in the container. They are 15 litre containers. And what I do, start of the season, or seed sowing-ish time, is I just go through my varieties and just list as to what they are. So you can see I for indeterminate, S for semi-determinate, D for determinate, and it just saves my memory trying to remember which uh, which they are and when i get to sort of this potting stage then i move the like types together and in that way um when i do this initial cleansing i suppose tidying up then the um determinate types will they be left and they're down that end and from now onwards they're the ones that look a little bit scruffy and a little bit bush like and I'll remember that I won't have to touch them. So um, yeah, it's a little bit of research to start with. Uh, most of the details normally contained on the seed packet, but otherwise Google is your friend in this instance. And um, as I say, get your first lot of ties in, side shooting done. I tend to use my fingers, that way I know that there's not going to be any uh, contamination going from um, yeah, secateurs or scissor blades. Um, it's much easier to clean your hands, I think. Uh, anyway, that's how I do it. Tie along and just um, carry on as the season progresses until, say, you get to the top, and then take the tops out. 
but um, tomatoes is one of those things that, to be honest, they are they are easy. Uh, I think people probably make it sound harder than it actually is, but um, growing tomatoes does well to to get the best results of growing your tomatoes does require you to know what type of tomato you have and as I say determinate or indeterminate is going to make a big factor and uh, if you remove all the side shoots on the determinate type then you will be losing a lot of fruit so just yeah spend that time um, as always if you've got any questions and please send them to me I'll do my best to answer them for you if you like what I'm doing then please subscribe to the channel don't forget to hit that reminder button so I don't miss out on future videos and I always say it so true just enjoy yourself have fun use time to unwind and it's uh, half eight now so that's what I'm doing relaxing and doing a bit of gardening so till next time bye for now